We need to act together to meet the problems of the nation boldly and to prove that the practical operation of democratic government is equal to the task of protecting the security of the people. During his first term, FDR vastly expanded the federal government's role in the nation's economy. Unprecedented job programs like the CCC and WPA put millions of people to work. By 1937, the economy showed marked improvement. Unemployment had declined from 25% to 17%, and America's gross national product, its GNP, was approaching pre-depression levels. But some of FDR's plans went awry. The centerpiece of FDR's economic revival plan was the National Industrial Recovery Administration, NRA. The NRA sought to end cutthroat competition that was reducing wages and prices to disastrous levels. It encouraged businesses and hundreds of industries to create codes of fair competition. The codes set maximum hours and minimum wages, guaranteed union rights, and prohibited child labor. But the NRA proved ineffective. Its codes proved unwieldy. Many favored larger businesses and encouraged monopolistic practices that hindered economic recovery. In 1935, the NRA was declared unconstitutional. The Supreme Court was becoming a major threat to the New Deal. FDR feared future rulings would overturn other reforms, including Social Security. In 1937, Roosevelt moved to remake the court. He requested legislation empowering him to add a new justice for every current justice over age 70, for up to a total of six new justices. Outraged critics charged he wanted to pack the court. The Senate buried FDR's proposal in committee, resulting in his greatest legislative defeat. Also in 1937, FDR made a fateful decision about federal spending. By the fall, unemployment had fallen from 25 to 14 percent. FDR believed the economy had turned a corner and federal stimulus spending was no longer needed. In September, he announced major spending cuts aimed at balancing the federal budget. Fearing inflation, he also supported action by the Federal Reserve to tighten credit. The results were disastrous. As spending fell and interest rates rose, economic activity dropped steeply. By March 1938, Unemployment had jumped back up to 19%. FDR's critics called it the Roosevelt Recession. Five years ago, we faced a very serious problem of economic and social recovery. For four and a half years, that recovery proceeded apace. It is only in the past seven months that it has received a visible setback. 